Hello travelers, welcome to the Copper Fox Inn. Come on in, take a seat, and join us as we discuss homebrew for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. My name is Thomas the Human Bard, and I am joined today by... Mercy the Tiefling Wizard. Onog the Half-Orc Barbarian. And Bean <gasps> the Rock Gnome Rogue. Oh, that's so nice. It's nice to everything to be back to normal again. <laughs> and nothing is weird. <laughs> um, I was looking around, talking around town the other day, um, searching for interesting homebrews, and there was something that was just the the talk of the town. <laughs> it's been discussed far and wide. People have been sending letters and, and messages by, by pigeon and sending stones all over the land in this uh, land of the Copper Fox Inn. And even Mercy, the great machine Redador? Yes, yeah. yes, even, <laughs> correct. Even our great lord Emperor, Emperor Twitterus. Um, and Mercy, you have been studying this, yeah. this, uh, interesting device on your own and that you had wanted to share it with us. Absolutely. So if you're not, um, big on Twitter or anything, you might've missed it somehow, but the combat wheelchair created by Sarah Thompson, you can find her on Twitter at Mustangs Art, has been, uh, making waves in D&D. It's really cool. Um, it was big news. It's gotten a lot of positive attention. Um, she did an interview for D&D Beyond about it, which I would encourage you to look up. And we just wanted to talk about it and share it with anyone who might have missed it because it's such a great addition to the game. Definitely. It's really delightful. It's like right up our alley in a lot of ways. It's all about, you know, accessibility for D&D, making sure everyone plays the game and feels represented. It's about like having weird and zany fun character ideas. It's about really creative, like, rules language mm -hmm. in order to solve problems. It's really good all over. Yeah, fantastic stuff. So this is a big document, so we're not going to be able to read through the entire thing. We're just going to hit some key points, so I would definitely encourage you to... We'll have a link to the document yeah. in the description below. Yeah, I would encourage you to click the link and read the whole thing and implement it in your game because it's fantastic stuff. So that being said, let's get right into it with the top flavor text here. Made with the adventurer in mind, the combat wheelchair is supportive and intuitive, designed for both daily activity and the pressures of combat during one's adventures. It can be specifically tailored to its user with a variety of intuitive upgrades designed and created by first-rate artificers and their disabled consultants to ensure high-grade comfort and excellent efficiency. Not only this, the wheelchair prides itself as being sleek, fashionable, and durable at a price affordable for the discerning mobility user. Taking its design from the chair used in sports, such as wheelchair basketball and rugby, the combat wheelchair can withstand high impact and even work as a weapon itself, providing the user with a means of both defense and attack. Anyone can be an adventurer. I think that last little sentence, like, anyone can be an adventurer, I think that's... I mean, that's such a core part about what we're about and what D&D is about, mm -hmm. but it's like such a good, you know, like ratatouille, you know, like anyone can cook. But D&D has often been a place where like people who feel a little bit on the outside, like, Ostracized, yeah. yeah, can like find comfort and like become this like cool version of themselves. Yeah. And I think that that idea of like anyone is, no one is excluded from this is so important. And that's why I love having something like this, that accessibility, even in how you role play something is so, so cool. Yeah, there's a, a line later on I wanted to call out as well, specifically, um, they kind of reiterate the point that they just made there, but later on in the document, they talk about starting off with the, the chair, if you start off a right. character, um, having it with a chair, and they say, remember, the combat wheelchair does not give a disabled character an advantage over abled characters. All it does is enable disabled characters to do the things an abled adventurer can. You should not be punished for something you cannot help, and to be punished for having a disability is cruel. Anyone can be a hero. And that, like, that design mentality is what we're all about here at the Copper Fox Inn, and I am very happy that this exists for people who Absolutely. want to have it in their games. Definitely. The next section here is what does this chair do? And in it, Sarah addresses a lot of the common like questions or criticisms that she gets and points out how basically they're all <laughs> invalid or accounted for. Um, but I wanted to read the last one specifically, which is why would anyone need a wheelchair? This world has magic. 
And she says, again, we recommend you read Salvatore's Drist novels, which are canon in D&D, and I believe contain mobility aids. Mm -hmm. Additionally, healing spells like restoration and regeneration are very costly. And what about those of us simply born with our disabilities? You cannot regenerate or restore what was not there to begin with. And some of us, well, we don't want to be fixed. From what I had understood about it, the designer had included these from specific... Harassment. Harassment they had yeah. received as a way to upfront attempt as best they could to just address these very directly and like honestly um, because th- so many people when this would have been shared on Twitter as just hey I made something cool if you like it that's great and like the vitriol and backlash that the creator received it was staggering and disappointing for somebody who you know I, I love d d and its community we like to think that, you know, it's a cool place and we all like each other here. And it was frustrating to see that without even having read it, without even having clicked on the link immediately, they were only met with like derision and correction saying, oh, actually, have you even thought about this? When it, that is it's in like, the, yeah, in if you'd read the PDF, yes, you would see that I had. <laughs> And that culture is one that I just cannot abide. I cannot stand for. I cannot support that kind of animosity for somebody who only made this as a means of um, accessibility, outreach, and representation Mm -hmm. for those who want it. It's not like this is a every game must contain this now every yeah, every game it's must in the contain law. this. Like it's yeah. it's there for those who want and need and need it, and the people who were personally offended that this could exist in anyone's game it it was it was quite disheartening and so i would hope that we as a community can all can all move on a bit from that can grow as a community and realize that these things only make the game better oh yeah things like this only make the game better as far as being more accessible more representative and more approachable for people who otherwise might not have played. There's some more um, text right here in the first page that I want to read that says, If you take issue with disabled people celebrating and having fun with the game that they love, then you need to reconsider your stance on disability. Disability is nothing to be ashamed about. And remember, no one is making you use this supplement. It is here and exists for those of us who need and who want to see ourselves in the tabletop games we so dearly enjoy. Happy adventuring. Mm-hmm. So good. Great. Yeah, fantastic. Definitely. I th- I think, unfortunately, a huge problem that a lot of people don't even realize that they have is that a lot of people's sense of self and pride can unfortunately stem from not actually who they are, but their ideas about what makes them superior to other people. Mm-hmm. And I think that in moments when they are faced with having to deal with other people can be just as cool and bad a and in fact are um then when you take that away from them then they are left with the the lack of self-confidence that they have and i think that people need to reassess how they view each other and themselves and realize that like we are all wonderful because of who we are not what makes us like better or worse than anyone else Mm -hmm. yeah definitely So let's just dive in here to um, some of the mechanics and functions of the combat wheelchair. So um, it is designed to be easy to maintain, upgrade, and repair. Its simplicity is a necessity, as an adventurer may not always be able to find a smith, artificer, or other such as tinkerer to pit stop at. As a result, you now have proficiency in tinker's tools. You are considered as being proficient in using your wheelchair both in everyday tasks and as a weapon in combat, which is similar to like an unarmed strike, honestly. Yeah. So um, just to kind of skim through a little bit of this here, um, it's portable. It's easy to like break down and bring with you, which I think but might... it does have an assigned weight. It has an assigned or weight. If, if you mm-hmm. care about that kind of stuff in your game. Which I like that it also says, if you find yourself struggling to carry your chair when you aren't using it, be sure to ask your party members for help. After all, what are friends for? Which is so yeah. nice. <laughs> which um, I also like, I just want to throw in because I think um, I saw some people who maybe hadn't like thought of this or occurred to them. Not every wheelchair user uses one 100% of the time. Sometimes people Mm -hmm. only need them for certain activities or lengths of time. So you might need it with you, but not always be using it. So 
And I like, like that that was included. It also here under versatile, it says the combat wheelchair lends itself well to both strength and dexterity builds, but is also just as perfect for a magic user. The frame of the chair and the wheels are made from lightweight but durable materials, allowing it to be versatile for the user. And then it explains um, a few like important rules clarifications here. So for the purposes of spells, wild shaping and transmutation, it is an extension of you. So it's an extension mm -hmm. of the self in the same way that a lot of the time, like your, your clothes, clothes and are, things are, yeah. are counted as the wild chairs, mm -hmm. this, or the, the, the wheelchair is the, the same. wild chair, the wild chair. Yeah. So if you were polymorphed or something that is goes with it, goes yeah. with you. Yeah, well, and, and I was, I was going to talk about that a little bit when it came up specifically, uh -huh. but there are a lot of instances of specific retreading of wording and things like that to make sure that, um, you know, like, for instance, later on, it says, like, this cannot be dispelled by dispelled magic as per the rules of dispel magic mm -hmm. or the things about, like, wild shaping and transmutation and stuff like that. Those are usually things that are actually in the rules itself. Like, it makes makes reference to this can't be dispelled by dispelled magic mm -hmm. when that's it says, like, in as per the rules of dispel magic. So but it goes out of its way a lot of the times to say. Well, when you wild shape, you can you bring the chair with you, and it's like, well, yeah, because it's a piece of equipment that's mm -hmm. in the rules of wild shape. I think I think part of it is, you know, we mentioned like, well, you could just say it counts as a piece of equipment, and everyone knows your equipment shapes with you. Yeah. But I think that there has been a huge attempt to really, really lock tight and secure like what can and cannot happen. What can happen. and mm -hmm. can't be done, yeah. and especially in regards to, unfortunately, like maybe either a DM or other players not being as accepting and mm -hmm. saying like, oh, but it doesn't do this. And just really making sure that every single thing... Black it gives you something text. to point to mm -hmm. yeah. and yeah. be and like, actually... Thing, is, yeah. Is yeah. I was just noticing I was just noticing that, that they You're it right. goes out of its way to repeat rules that like mm -hmm. in a normal, in a normal like supplementary thing, you wouldn't need to repeat that because that's right. in the rules inherent to themselves. But this, they go out of their way to say... Right. No, this transmutes with you. We're not leaving room for debate. Mm -mm. Yeah, that, like, we're not, re we're not leaving room for happen. debate. This happens when this happens. Yeah, pretty much any question or like corner case you can think of, it's most likely covered in this document. If you're, yep. if you find yourself wondering, like, oh, but what even in this situation? Even if it's already covered in another, it's part probably of the clarified. Rules, it's also, still probably covered yeah. in the document. It's it's very thorough. So I would definitely <laughs> read it before uh, tweeting at the at the another. creator and asking yeah. them. But what yeah. about wild? <laughs> shape looks at mm -hmm. the paragraph yeah read the syllabus shape. right and you know what like read maybe <laughs> maybe even if you do read it don't like be rude to people online <laughs> it doesn't matter yeah <laughs> yeah no don't for be sure rude to there's an old old quote in magic the gathering that reading the card explains the card <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> reading the wheelchair pdf will explain the wheelchair pdf <laughs> yeah yeah, and then it goes through, like, the equipment and the anatomy of the chair, so it clarifies mm. really specifically what is included here, um, which mm. is really helpful, but we don't need to yeah. go go through all of that specifically. A, a lot of that stuff is more or less useful depending on how um, granular your game's, like, inventory management is. Where this, this gives you exactly, like, it comes with the things that would come in an explorer's pack or whatever it is, so that you know exactly it has tinderbox and ropes or whatever it might be mm -hmm. for a game or, or where it that has a lot. It has pouches that can be treated as pouches, you know? Yep. Those pouches are pouches. So in the anatomy of the chair, it describes um, on the armrests, it says on one of the armrests, your choice is a beacon stone. And then it defines what a beacon stone is in its own section. It says, beacon stone. These stones are common factory made by artificers across the realms for this sole purpose. They are magically imbued with very low level transmutation magic. To be specific, they carry about the same level of energy as a cantrip spell does, providing enough energy for a little boost and nothing more. Each chair comes with one of these stones set into an armrest, your choice, and you can use it in two different ways. The first is that you can run your hand or fingers over it to indicate and guide the chair in what direction you want it to go. This use was designed for users who may not have the full use of their arms or an illness or disability, mm -hmm. which means they lack the energy to push the chair themselves. Regardless of whether you push or direct the chair using the stone, the combat wheelchair always has a base movement speed of 25 feet. The second way to use the stone is when faced with ascending or descending stairs, the true favored enemy of many a wheelchair user. 
Refer to the next section for details on how uh, the chair works with stairs. And then additionally, the beacon stone is unique in that it only responds to the owner's touch. If someone who is not the chair's user attempts to use the stone, the chair will not respond and will instead have to be moved using the push rims. Dispel magic has no effect upon this stone. I really like the beacon stone concept because it allows for... You can have a character who rolls their wheels with their arms, or if you want to play a character who represents you and you have very limited mobility, the use of maybe only one limb or no limbs at all, Mm -hmm. there is a method by which you can still be represented in the game. Because there are chairs like that in the real world that allow you to move around with different um, control devices. Mm -hmm. And this is just a sort of catch-all for all of those control devices, but it's better than all of them and more intuitive because it's magic. Yeah. In, in all honesty, this isn't like a like a semantic critique. It's more of a honestly a flavor critique kind of a thing. Um, and that's with the ability, the the levitation ability to go up and down stairs. Now, I'm not saying it shouldn't have that. I'm just saying it feels like, especially with all the other like upgrades and add-ons that are talked about, it feels like it's for a different chair. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, you it, you can say like a lot of wheelchairs don't normally get to go upstairs. Well, first of all, there are real-world wheelchairs that can. But whenever you're playing in a fantasy setting, with stairs especially, and with dungeons especially, Mm. she mentions it, like, the ability to not be able to go upstairs right away nerfs your character's ability to participate so quickly and so off the bat. Mm -hmm. I think maybe, and much like saying, hey, your wheelchair can get damaged, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to, I think maybe Mm -hmm. you should just make the options to say... Most wheelchairs can just go up, you know, most combat wheelchairs can pretty much just go upstairs. If you want to play with the difficulty of being able to Mm -hmm. go upstairs, then here is a mechanic for that. Sure. So the specific rules for ascending and descending stairs, we all know dungeons often have a lot of stairs. And sweet Azalen, let's not get started on Castle Ravenloft's maze of steps. (laughs) Let's face it, (laughs) stairs are difficult, especially when you're in a wheelchair, which is why the beacon stone is here to help. By tapping your fingers or hand against the stone twice, you inform it that it needs to help you go up or down a flight of stairs. As a result, the chair begins to hover, starting at two feet off the ground. Using your fingers or hand on the stone surface, you guide it to go forwards or backwards, depending on which direction the stairs go in. On the staircase, tapping the stone twice to hover up to the next step or tapping once if you would like it to hover down. The chair will always hover two feet over the step it is above when being used in this manner and can continue ascending or descending like this until the end of the stairs has been reached. Once you have reached the top or bottom of the stairs, you can continue to move the chair as it usually does using either the push rims or by directing it with the stone. Having the hover two feet above, I think, would basically put you at, like, eye level as mm-hmm. if you were standing. Yeah. So, because at first I was like, yeah. what if the ceiling was too low? And I'm like, oh, well, then no one could. It's just two feet. You're <laughs> yeah. already sitting yeah. down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, right. And what? it would be weird for you to be in a very small tunnel that also had stairs. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> yeah, that doesn't make any sense. But I was like, oh, yeah, that's just it, how tall you would be if you were standing. Yeah. It does make this mildly more hazardous for nearby gnomes. <laughs> 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 as you can just float over them now. Float at eye level. I, I mean, I walk between people's legs all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's interesting when I read this, for some reason, the only image I could get in my head was of the hoverboards in Back to the Future <laughs> yeah. 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they work as long as they are close enough to that. They can't just fly. You can't just, like, go straight up 100 feet with them. They only work if they're just a little bit off the ground right. like, due to the nature of the propulsion system. It's not like it just gives you a fly Unless speed. you have power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then they can go on water, but uh, I don't think I don't think there's any upgrades that add rocket boosters. <laughs> it gives it stars. dragon wings. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then this next bit is a fantastic inclusion: the self propulsion variant using the create magic item downtime. This is from Xanathar's Guide to Everything. You, or an ally, can spend the time imbuing the chair with a low-level pulse of transmutation magic. This typically appears in the form of a dwarven rune engraved onto the chair's frame. Once this process has been completed, you will find that you are now able to use telepathy to command the chair's movements, and it will respond accordingly. This telepathy does not require concentration, working off your quick passing thoughts instead. This variant means the chair is now a magic item, but isn't affected by dispel magic in accordance with the spell's description. Awesome. Love I love that. Yeah, because the spell magic mm-hmm. is more for, like, spells and stuff like that. And um, effects. Yeah. Th- a question, though. Does this have a limitation? 
it, on where you can be to command it because I think that would that'd be interesting is basically oh, you're like if you weren't I in summon it? my chair and then it just rolls into view I mean that'd be sweet it yeah. doesn't <laughs> in the cool. document list a like you have to be on the same plane mm-hmm. of existence or anything like that um so According to this, it seems as though you could. So then we, we just have a little homeward pi- bound visage of just the chair rolling by itself across <laughs> That's across continents. That is wonderful to try and get to you. I, I think adventure. from um, just like a homebrew writing creation standpoint, mm-hmm. I agree with the creator and in not including a limitation because like the whole idea is that it puts you on an equal playing field with an able bodied character, and it's like I don't have to be like. Mm-hmm. I can't be separated from my legs. Yeah. You know, so it's like if yeah. you, you know, you can Well, actually, it from you wherever. can be separated from the legs. <laughs> Technically, I suppose. Darth you Maul die. begs to differ. It, yeah, Dar- Darth, Maul, right, Darth right. Maul would like to know your or location. You are separated from your legs, and then you get one of these puppies, and, and then you're you get okay. one of these puppies, and yeah. But it's like but, uh, if you were separated from your chair and then you needed to use it, you can just bring it to yourself yeah, sure. like yeah i think that's fine i think that's cool so it is also it also it is also interesting to note because they very clearly and deliberately wanted to avoid this being an object that requires attunement yeah yeah however there have been a lot of stipulations that because of that lack of attunement and that's how D words things that can only be used by one person at a time it is becoming a little muddied in that regard like especially with the the beacon stone where it says only the owner can use it, but then it also says mm. only the user can use it, and so what's the difference between the owner and user? Sure. Um, and then in this case, you know, who can telep- who can telepathically command the chair? Is it only you? And in that case, does it require attunement or things like that? Or, or yeah, some, you know. yeah, some sort of ritual to make it so that you're the one, even if it doesn't use an attunement slot. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I think it's one of those things that's relying on good faith and common sense because right. it's like. It really shouldn't be an issue. You know it is who just it's meant for. Yeah, right. like yeah. it if if that is becoming an issue in your party, like that's kind of on right. the DM but for it, letting it be it's, one. And it's clearly especially with like the beacon stone stuff, it's like clearly so that like someone can't just grab it and make it go somewhere yeah. they definitely, want it to go. Definitely, definitely. But then it is like, well, if somebody else needs to sit in the chair, can they use the beacon mm-hmm. stone? Cause do they then count as a user if right. the owner is gone or you know? Basically, there's like three levels of like, is this, is this attunement or mm-hmm. is this not attunement? Um, I want to take a look at the actions that the combat wheelchair can do because I think that's a really cool and important part of you can do like with the of what it does. Yeah, that mm-hmm. you can do with it. So it's basically using it as a sort of weapon, as an extension of yourself, which is really cool. So actions: the combat wheelchair can be used as a weapon that can make melee weapon attacks. At lower levels, you may wish to use one of these attacks instead of a standard weapon attack. At higher levels, you may want to use the chair in this way for your extra attack. You are considered as being proficient in using the wheelchair as a weapon. When in combat, the chair can still be moved around one-handed by using the beacon stone. Additionally, a hand holding a one-handed or versatile weapon can still move the chair using either the push rims or the beacon stone. There are three types of attacks the chair can make. So tire strike. By pivoting on one wheel and turning into your momentum, you can strike a target creature in range with one of the chair's rear wheels. Melee weapon attack. Your strength dexterity modifier plus proficiency to hit. Reach five feet, one target. The hit is 1d6 plus your strength or dexterity modifier and it's bludgeoning damage. Great. Makes mm-hmm. sense. Pretty Love simple. It. Nice, nice basic, just it's like a club. Bow staff mm-hmm. attack yeah. level yep. damage. Yeah. That's and great. then ram. By moving 10 feet in a straight line towards a small or medium creature, you can bodily slam the chair into the target creature. If this attack is made using the optional feature swift, the chair deals an additional four bludgeoning damage to the target creature on a successful hit. The target creature must succeed on a DC 14 strength save or be pushed back five feet from you. And then the last one is crush. So if the target creature is prone on the ground, you can choose to roll your chair over them, dealing damage. The creature must be small or medium. If this attack is made using the optional feature swift, the chair deals an additional four bludgeoning damage to the target creature on a successful hit. Oh, they're so good. Yeah, I so like I those. Don't know, I don't know how familiar any of you guys are with like watching um, wheelchair basketball or yeah. anything like that. 
Mm-hmm. But it gets kind of violent out there. <laughs> yeah. And this yeah, is it, like, it, it, honestly, it gets pretty aggressive. Very, it's like a contact sport. Oh, full contact, pretty much. This is like a pretty, it seems to be at least, I don't know, but a, a pretty authentic representation yeah. of the damage you can deal with a wheelchair if you really would like to. And I love the mental image of like, you know, the the lich who underestimated the player in the wheelchair and is now prone on the ground, like, please. Being driven over yeah, back like, and forth. Please, no. And then you're just crushing them. <laughs> your butt. That's awesome. One thing that um, really stuck out to me in the interview that I listened to for D&D Beyond with the creator of this, one thing that they talked about was in wheelchair sports and people who've, like, played wheelchair sports, how powerful it feels when you like ram someone with your wheelchair and you feel the force of that reverberating through the chair but none of the pain that you would feel if you smashed your body into Mm -hmm. someone and how just like rad and empowering that is and saying like hey dms if you have someone playing with a combat wheelchair look into that for your descriptions of hits and Mm -hmm. combats like familiarize yourself with that that feeling Um, and that experience i mean we're we're all feeling it in our bones of like Yo, a barbarian in this thing. Oh that yeah, right. oh, it's cool. cool. <laughs> or or the exploding warlock is also very cool. Well, like yeah. you guys have said, <laughs> yeah. Or the exploding warlock. Um, like you guys have said, like you know, we I've seen I've seen like wheelchair basketball and it gets really intense mm-hmm. in the in the description where it's like a wheelchair like you would use in 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 basketball or rugby and I just went oh no, wheelchair <laughs> oh no, wheelchair rugby. Is, yeah. It's gonna get dangerous. Regular rugby, you thought that was already dangerous. Yeah. I mean, it's basically like you've got an armored roll cage. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. really cool. And then there's this segment talking about um, how tough the chair is, its durability, mm-hmm. which you can One of the, read. I do, this is a very unique way of handling like durability on mm-hmm. an object. So it I is. It's very neat. It, it gets a little technical, I think, for us to cover on the yeah. show right now with all the rest we have <laughs> to cover. One of the things I think is important about it, though, is there's a, a caveat that says, however, the rulings of critical hits and how they affect your share are completely optional, and you don't have to use them in your game in order to have mm-hmm. a fun experience. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so in a game where you, the player who is playing in the combat wheelchair, wants to experience and participate in a narrative about keeping your wheelchair maintained mm-hmm. and making sure that you repair it when it needs to be repaired, that's cool and you have that option. Mm-hmm. But also, if you're a person who that isn't going to be fun for, that's not going to provide you with any sort of... Mm-hmm. Um, role play you just don't want to worry about it you can wor- say to your dm i would like to uh, not use that optional like damage chair mm-hmm. rules and just my chair is like me it's whatever we, there's we don't need extra rules about repairing it and like that's totally acceptable like if you can handle he- healing from a stab wound by sleeping like you can handle not worrying yeah. about a wheelchair breaking like it's fine why does why does the wheelchair get better when i sleep <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's like why do your organs you, you like, why do all of, I, I narrated that crocodile biting off at least two of your limbs but you're fine now yeah you took a nap you're fine yeah so it's like i like that it's like you don't have to worry about it if it's yeah. just gonna bog the game down it makes me think of a of a character dynamic with like in Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood where you have Winry who's always repairing his arm yeah. right after he like gets it messed up in combat and I feel like that's kind of fun if you had like a tinkerer in uh-huh. your party and you mm-hmm. wanted to have that relationship dynamic. that could be fun yeah sort of the James Bond and Q like you're always breaking the cool thing I made <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, and, it's, and it's one of those it's one of those things too where in the dungeon master's guide like hardcore and like extremist rules are a thing you can yeah, do like gritty where it's realism like you and don't stuff. you don't heal just because you took a long rest you have to use healing kits mm-hmm, and rations right. and things like that well, and the same thing applies to this where it's like you can just have a happy fun adventure where, where you're where you have one of these wheelchairs or you can have the one where it's like no there's a risk of this thing mm-hmm. getting destroyed just like anything else well we we were playing a campaign once where we started making it harder by if you got hit with a critical hit, something permanent could happen to you. Mm-hmm. And my character Yeah, got I started like using in, the, the alternative like critical hit. Yeah, role. my yeah. character got like an infected wound and I was like half speeded for like two days yeah. until I got that fixed. Because yeah, you got hit in the leg and like you yeah. couldn't walk straight. Yeah. That so, was actually one of the use cases for this that the author has talked about is characters who they like had to retire their player character because like their barbarian broke their back or something and now they're bringing that character back in a combat wheelchair yeah. which oh, is that's really so fun. That's cool. Isn't yeah, that cool? That's awesome. Yeah. That's that's awesome. awesome. yeah I love it. 
your old character that you know was fighting the cool like boss in the in the boss chamber and fell into the lava burning like their legs like but now they now can come out back, of retirement baby. because somebody in the forgotten realms invented and now their upper half is yeah. even more swole yeah, they've been working <laughs> I I was out. out they pull me back in yeah i just think that's really that's really fun that was a way i hadn't immediately thought of using it so then there are some optional features that basically help you customize it more to your playstyle or your class. So there's like swift or stable. So you, you know, have advantage on being knocked prone and things like that. Um, the there's a tuning. Of swift is so good. Yeah, swift is very good. You go downhill very fast, but yeah. you can't stop. Yeah, and it lets you do more damage on those yeah. skills earlier. Yep. Or there's a tuning, um, which would be useful for like if... I mean, I'll just read that one because it's hard to explain. So when you attune to magical items, the effect of the item is shared between you and the combat wheelchair when you are in the chair. For example, Mm. boots of flying in accordance with the Dungeon Master's Guide aren't designed with disabled adventurers in mind. Some disabled folks have mobility issues where they can't support their own weight standing unaided and will require the combat wheelchair. Using this feature, when you attune to a magic item and are using the chair, both you and the chair share the item's benefit and any effects it may have. When you get out of the chair, only you retain the benefit of the item. Yeah. Which, so basically, yeah. if you have boots of speed or boots of flying or, or, or el- elven boots, the effects apply to you when you are in the chair. And mm-hmm. nobody can be like, boots um, you don't fly because your s- seat belt. Oh, no. <gasps> oh, my gosh. You ride that yeah. wheelchair on the ceiling? I'm still well, imagining yeah. the home... <laughs> I'm still imagining the homeward bound like chair, like <laughs> with all these things that. attached to it. It's like no, I will get when there. You're out of the chair, it doesn't. Do no, I know, but you just left the boots of well, spider climbing them. on the chair, and so it starts using them. No, wait, but wait, you could combine that with ram. So you go on the ceiling, and then you you just let choose go. to fall, <laughs> and then you have ten feet, and you ram someone, <laughs> squish them like a there, bug. There is um, in one of the upgrades a very. Um, like detailed, one of the top, like most expensive upgrades of all. Gives, a very terrifying. <laughs> yeah, g- gives you, um, gives it spider legs that can yeah. go on all terrain. But it's like it basically turns it into like a legendary magical it's item. Very at that cool. Point. It costs like yeah. thousands of gold pieces. That's not mm-hmm. like every wheelchair doesn't get that. That's right. if you as a player want to invest in that. You're like just a like level fourteen in, player. Yeah, just yeah. like investing in any other magic like, would, item in the game. You, level would you one like players... to be Darth Maul? Uh, Darth Maul wants to know lo- your location. Yeah. <laughs> Level one players don't get a Vorpal Blade, but you can play towards a Totally. Exactly. Right. Totally. Exactly. For sure. And one of the things about these, like, swift, stable, attuning, amount of combat is, like, they are explicitly optional. Right. Like, mm-hmm. These, I feel, are designed more for a game where we're all here to have some fun and let, let us do some zany stuff, as opposed to a game where you're we're very concerned about balance mm-hmm. and everyone having a perfectly, mm-hmm. like, um, challenging experience because some games, you know, it gets a little wild and zany and fun and more cartoonish. Maybe you have yeah. spider legs and other, now. And, yeah. yeah, in other games, it's a little bit more gritty realism. Mm-hmm. And you don't want to have these extra um, features so. of the chair. And so these are optional for that I feel purpose. like it's depending on how fantastical your setting is. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, whatever game you're running. So um, I thought this was a really creative and cool addition too that I hadn't initially thought of mounted combat for characters that are looking to specialize in mounted combat the combat wheelchair can be considered as Mm -hmm. your mount in addition to this you may choose to attach your polearm lance or halberd to the chair's armrest your choice which one at no extra financial cost this addition is something either you or your party can do and that's so fun you just like jousting (laughs) like that's really cool i hadn't thought about that before uh, what's the xanathar fighter class Um, oh the um cavalier cavalier it's like built around a mounted combat style it's like a cavalier fighter with a combat wheelchair it's very cool yeah i thought that was really fun yeah you I push like a button on your armrest and like shk, a pop out lance comes out. <laughs> oh wait, 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 wait! You have it up like it's always pointed up, and it's got a little flag on the top of it to oh, be yeah. like, "This is where I am, guys." But then you hit a button <laughs> and, it, and it falls down to a ninety degree angle. <laughs> and like cartoon style, the flag like switches to like an angry face. And it's like, <laughs> you're in trouble now. That's fantastic. That's hilarious. I like that a lot. And then we already touched on the upgrades a little bit. We don't have time to, you know, read through all of them. But basically, these are ways that um, with time and money, you can customize it to fit your setting Mm -hmm. or your play style more. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, and much like there are ways for other players to customize their own equipment by mm-hmm. silvering right. their weapons or getting barding for a pet or a Buying horse. Buying magic items. Or, yeah. Yeah. yeah, like we like we said earlier, this is basically the equivalent of like each of these is the is a representation of a different magical item, but now you can just attach it. And you can only get two attachments for your Yeah. yeah. You can only get two upgrades at a time, so it's it's limited in that way. So it's it's really cool to try and like mix and match. Yeah, like if you as a player want to use the combat wheelchair for several characters, then mm. they can still each feel like the their wheelchairs can each feel unique. Yeah, which is really very fun. customization. Yeah, yeah. Your I like druid, that. Well, you, your you, druid in a wheelchair will feel very different than your barbarian in a wheelchair or your wizard absolutely. in a wheelchair. Yeah. I like that a lot. Or, you have like a closet at home that has your several different upgrades and you're like, what's the plan? And they're like, we're going into a cave and you're like, got it. And you go get <laughs> like, like the, the parts cave. that you need. <laughs> so I, I do like too, like the way that, and like we said, we don't have to read all of them, but the way they're introduced, it's like all terrain tiles, agile suspension. It's like, oh, it's made lighter so that you have better advantages on like acrobatics check or things like that or all-terrain tires they help you move safer and then it goes to mounted gun <laughs> <laughs> it's uh-huh. like yes these cushions help me move around got- so I don't get whiplash and here's the loaded gun I have <laughs> some of them are also like pretty brutal like yeah. shin shredders razor yeah yeah edges. and then it just keeps going with like yeah razor le- edged ed- wheels spider legs <laughs> yeah it's yo, pretty cool yo dude check out Got my tricked out wheelchair. It's got like this microfiber cushion on it. It's really helping with my lumbar support. Also, I've taped razor blades to the <laughs> wheels. <laughs> I've got scimitars coming out That's of the so tires. That's so funny. Uh, one of my uh, ones I liked, I wanted to touch on real quick, is the uh, suppression tires. Mm-hmm. Uh, the rear tires are replaced with a set which absorbs sounds the wheels typically make when they move across certain terrains. Using these tires gives you advantage on stealth checks. You still have ease of travel over coast, forest, grassland, and mountain terrains, but arctic, desert, swamp, and underdark still count as difficult terrains for you. Um, one of the mm-hmm. tires, all-terrain tires, allows you to travel normally in all, all terrains, basically, but um, typically the wheelchair only travels normally on coast, forest, grassland, right. and mountain terrains. Um, you have to get an upgrade to make it so it works in the swamps and things like that. Which really is very different from how it normally is for players who are walking, where like yeah. you would need magic boots to let you yeah. not have You'd to deal with snow boots terrain. or yeah. whatever yeah. Yeah, going mm-hmm. on. We, we but, all went and bought snow boots in one of our adventures. Yeah, yeah we went for exactly. sure. The but the, the suppression tires, I like the idea that it, it like gives you um, advantage on your stealth checks in, while you're in your chair, um, it says you can't mm-hmm. use it with the upgrade armor plate. So there's some, like, you're not allowed to combine these two ones um, built into that. Yeah. But I just love the idea of, like, a very stealthy rogue in their wheelchair. That, like, it it's like a... They like move a, no footsteps. Like, an, yeah. like, it's like an electric vehicle where you can't hear it pull up. You know what yeah. I mean? Where, like, they just, like, cruise mm-hmm. by perfectly silently down a hill. And they're just, like, I've... in their ninja suit. <laughs> and they're, like, lower to the ground. So yeah. they're going to be, like, more easily obscured. <laughs> like, people aren't going to be looking there. Yeah, it's the, great. I love the image of that. Of them, like, breaking into a vault. And, like, the guard looks one direction looks the other direction behind them. You see the person in the wheelchair just shoot across frame. They look back. They, they didn't see anything. Yeah, that's so good. <laughs> I got my my wheelchair painted matte black. No yeah. one can see it. I yeah. wrapped the wheels in velvet. No one can hear me coming. That's great. And then um, this also includes, at the end of it, which is a nice addition, it includes a background, the Paralympian. Oh, yeah, I read that one first. Mm. It's really cool. I enjoy yeah. it a lot. I mean, it's exactly what it sounds like. You are a wheelchair athlete and it I mean it has all the good stuff it's got the tables for like personality traits and flaws mm-hmm. and bonds and all of that it's really it's a good read I An recommend it background for you well I really like at least in the version of the feature I was reading um before because it wasn't in this pdf it was like the separate one mm-hmm. um it, it's it's kind of like light very specific versions of like actor and soldier and and like pirate or something like that where it's like kind of combined, you, because yeah. of your background you you can always find a place to like have a skirmish in your favorite sport yeah you know? it's a <laughs> really it's just like, good there just are like, five people here i demand we play basketball yeah. and then they have to. <laughs> it's like it's honestly my favorite athlete background i've ever seen yeah, made really I, re- I really enjoy it i think it's well done but yeah one of the cool things it's, about it's pretty cool one of the cool things about a uh, fifth edition is that um, there's a rule in the player's handbook for custom backgrounds mm-hmm. for if you are unhappy with any of the backgrounds provided, you can make a custom background 
Um, and it gives some rules about how to do so, and it says that you can work with your DM on it. But that is not an optional rule. That is a rule. You can always make a custom background. Yeah. That's yep. not just like, mm. it is not optional. You are allowed <laughs> the to. The DM can't tell you yeah, you can't. can't tell you <laughs> well, or, it says to work with even, your DM on it, and it gives you rules of how to make right, a custom right. background. But yeah, mm-hmm. you are allowed even, to. Even if you go to like uh, an Adventure, Adventure League, League or like yeah. really official mm-hmm. place, they can't say, no, you can't make a custom background. Yeah, as long right. as it follows they, all the criteria. All the same it's, rules. As long yeah. as it's reasonable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the So in the D&D Beyond interview as well, the creator talked about how it's been just like really fulfilling as she's gotten messages from people who have really enjoyed using it or have had friends who now want to play D&D because they can see themselves in it and just like how cool and fun that's been. And they also encouraged like if you have ideas how you want to change it up or additions you want to make for your specific character, homebrew your own stuff to go with this. Like this is meant to be compatible with other homebrew. And um, in that interview too, they were just speaking very positively and encouragingly of even if you aren't going to be using this as a player character, I would Mm -hmm. definitely like as I DM going forward, I think it's a space that I want to be more mindful of including disabled NPCs and not in a way where you're doing a really negative, like, disabled villain trope where it's, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. you know, or or using it as, like, they were calling it, like, inspiration porn of, like, help this poor, sad, disabled person. Like, they're just a person. Yeah. And, but just having your world be populated not only by a, one kind of person, you know? And, and I right. think have that's your, something to think about. Have your local barkeep you'd go in and ask for rumors in the area just... Be in a combat wheelchair. Why not? Ah, sure. but super friends, you didn't ca- calculate in your plans the loaded gun I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Basically, this combat wheelchair is very cool, um, and it will make your game very cool. And mm-hmm. I, it was like, if anyone doesn't know about this yet, I want to tell you about it, because it's very good. <laughs> I think this is what the community, the D&D community needs this is the direction we all want to move in we want the game to be a place where as they've said multiple times here anyone can be an adventurer anyone can be a hero one of the great like uh sort of personal stories that was shared either on twitter or on the interview i don't remember where was of uh, a dad teaching his son how to play D for the first time and he was sharing that somebody had made this combat wheelchair recently and the son went over to his sister who is in a wheelchair and it was like look you can play too like they have characters who have wheelchairs and she was so excited she'd never seen a game that had characters with wheelchairs before and like that's if that's not the heart of what D&D should be then I don't know what is like that's great so that's the combat wheelchair. Um, I would definitely encourage to, you know, follow the link, read the document, um, look up the creator on Twitter. Again, that was at Mustangs Art. I believe that the links to this are also the pinned tweet on her Twitter feed. So you can look at it there. You can look at her other work. And yeah, I mean, if you if you end up using this in your game or anything, we'd love to hear about it. You can talk about it in the comments or reach out to us on social media at the Copper Fox Inn. Yeah. I'd also highly recommend to check out... Um, Sarah has made a uh, streaming community of uh, disabled uh, members of the TTRPG community who stream together called Heroes Without Limits. Um, awesome. If you want to check them out on Twitch, it's twitch.com slash H without limits. Um, and so it's, you know, people with disabilities or chronic illnesses that have, you know, come together to make us uh, you know, D&D stream together as a means of kind of representation. In, in the community and that's really awesome so please check them out there um, if you have any ideas for a homebrew that you've designed that you want us to talk about on the show comment it below or send it to us at our email thecopperfoxin at gmail.com or on social media at thecopperfoxin remember to like the video and subscribe for future Dungeons and Dragons homebrew discussion content and until next time keep on adventuring <laughs>